Volcanoes have always been a fascinating point of study, both historically and scientifically. Whether we have been discovering new ones or looking at famous eruptions such as Pompeii, volcanoes continue to be a key point of interest in studies and research. NASA defines volcanoes as an opening on the surface of a planet or moon that allows material warmer than its surroundings to escape from its interior. Whether you know lots about them or you vaguely remember making one with baking soda as a kid, these discoveries are sure to pique your interest. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three interesting volcanic discoveries. Hiker finds bombs dropped on Mauna Loa volcano 85 years ago. This story may seem like it begins in 2020, with a keen hiker in Hawaii, though in reality, the real story began much earlier in 1935. In 2020, an unnamed hiker was climbing Mauna Loa, one of five volcanoes on the island of Hawaii, when they stumbled across something rather strange that would derail the course of their journey. This explorer had found two devices, unexploded and now rather rusty, that had been dropped on this active volcano 85 years earlier. The hiker snapped a picture of the devices and posted it to his social media. Though these images bore a striking resemblance to some that had been seen before, 43 years prior, geologists working under the United States Geological Service had found and photographed one of the devices found in 2020. The other was sticking out from the wall of a lava tube, partially encased within it. A lava tube is the natural tunnel shape that is formed from the lava channels. This is where the lava flows through. The real tale begins in the autumn of 1935, when the Mauna Loa volcano erupted, sending lava on a path towards Hilo a city with 15,000 people living within it at the time. The lava travelled at a terrifying rate of one mile every day, giving an estimation of less than 20 days before it reached Hilo. This is when the action begins. Thomas Jagger, a volcanologist, and the man who founded the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory suggested a new, strange, outlandish plan to halt the course of the lava. They could blast the volcano. The explanation behind this bizarre-sounding plan was that if they could blast the lava channels, they could create new openings which may redirect the lava away from the city. The US Army Air Corps sent 10 bombers and 2,600 pound devices, with 300 pounds of TNT explosives to Mauna Loa, aiming to drop them on the volcano and save the city of Hilo. Five devices landed in the lava as it was flowing, and unfortunately, the other 15 missed entirely. Some devices landed hundreds of feet away from the volcano and went unfound. They were never diffused. A geologist, Harold Stearns, commented that even if they had hit the walls of the volcano, the weapons used were not strong enough to successfully break them. The five that did hit the lava made minimal impact, as their craters were quickly filled in by the lava flow behind it. Still defending his plan, Jagger claimed that even though the devices did not stop the lava from advancing, their explosions may have slowed down the flow. Regardless as to the reasoning, the lava stopped advancing towards Hilo six days afterwards. Though scientists have since explained this is likely due to weakened volcanic activity, not a successful device blast. The same method was used against Mauna Loa in 1942, although natural processes stopped this volcanic devastation too, not the raid of devices. This research has been continued to be tested on old lava deposits to see if this is a possible solution to volcanic eruptions. The majority of geologists do not believe these devices are a successful measure against a volcano's eruption, regardless of the firepower and strength of the weapons deployed. Even if the walls cave, there is still a magma chamber filled with lava to push out. These experiments, whilst ultimately unsuccessful, have stood the test of time, with devices remaining on Mauna Loa, serving as a memory of the disaster that almost struck Hilo in 1935. New evidence of recent volcanic activity on Mars raises the possibilities of subterranean life. Spring of 2021 has seen the publication of a recent study, suggesting volcanic activity on Mars and perhaps more excitingly, outlining the impact this could have upon alien subterranean life. Researchers from the University of Arizona Lunar and Planetary Laboratory found what has been described as a dark deposit, 
around a 30-kilometer fissure on Mars. A fissure is a volcanic vent that lava can burst through. This fissure, known as the Cerberus Fosse system, could be the most recent area of volcanic activity on Mars, having erupted as recently as 50,000 years ago, which is relatively recent despite it sounding so long ago. The explanation behind the fissure's recent eruption is currently that the magma erupted when it came into physical contact with gases or ice, both of which then vaporized. This explanation is purely speculation, is subject to change, and is by no means definitive. What has sparked further discussion and speculation, however, is the suggestion that Cerberus Fosse could mean there is warm magma, a source of heat, beneath the surface of Mars. This, coupled with existing assumptions of groundwater, could be enough to support some form of life. Furthermore, the heat of the magma, with it being so close to the surface of Mars, has the potential to melt some permafrost, producing liquid water which can be absorbed and leak through cracks in rocks. This environment, warm and wet, could support life on Mars. The idea that these could be suitable conditions is supported by the work and answers found under the Earth 4D project. The work, led by Barbara Sherwood Loller at the University of Toronto, found that some life on Earth is able to survive without any sunlight whatsoever. Who is to say the same cannot happen on Mars? One hazard that has eliminated the possibility of life on Mars in the past is the thin atmosphere and lack of ozone layer. This would expose life to deadly ultraviolet light and intense amounts of radiation. However, creatures living underground would be protected from both as well as the famously cold climate on Mars. Despite the environmental clues we continue to uncover, we are yet to discover any life itself on the Red Planet, and some people are convinced that it is not such a bad thing. Many scientists have speculated that meeting intelligent life may be dangerous for us. If they are more advanced than ourselves, they could cause us intentional harm. Though many concerns surrounding potential life on Mars focus on contamination and disease. How would human immune systems react to Martian microbes and vice versa? If there is no resistance to the foreign microbes, it could spell disaster for humans. After all, we have seen many times here on Earth that native populations can fall ill when new colonists arrive. This volcanic discovery presents research potential for so many avenues, making life on Mars a topic of research that is being seriously reconsidered. The Moon Io is the most volcanically active world in the solar system. Io, one of Jupiter's 79 moons, is thought to be the celestial body in our solar system that contains the most volcanic activity. Revealed by the Voyager 1 spacecraft, Io is the first place outside of Earth for us to observe erupting volcanoes. Not only did Io make history as the first to be seen to have erupting volcanoes, but the 400 volcanic craters can also produce eruptions that reach heights of a staggering 300 miles. Despite this impressive volcanic activity, there is a lot about the volcanoes on Io that are shrouded in mystery. For example, the volcanoes are not in the positions we would expect based on activity here on Earth. The brightest, boldest, biggest eruptions are all located in one hemisphere of Io, not spread over the Moon. And a ginormous depression, 8,100 square miles big, named Loki Patera, thwarts all expectations surrounding volcanoes. Ashley Davis, a co-author on the study of Io, has described the new data as a gift to the planetary science community, despite their confusing nature. He continues to explain that the eruptions on Io could resemble those that took place on Earth years ago, with them being described as geochemically primitive. Davis summarizes this, describing this data as a window into Earth's past. The volcanoes on Earth are the results of peaks and vents, eventually resulting in eruptions. Io, on the other hand, works a little bit differently, with its volcanic eruptions being down to some strange orbits. Io is one of the Galilean moons of Jupiter, with the other three being Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, with their collective name crediting their discoverer, Galileo Galilei. For every one orbit Io completes, Europa completes two and Ganymede four. This pushes Io into a more elliptical orbit than it would have been without this interference from neighbouring moons. This change can be by up to 330 feet. When this is combined with the gravitational pull of Jupiter, 
Io experiences lots of heating due to friction, giving a new extreme to the conditions on Io, contributing to the strange volcanic activity. As research continues to unfold, we aim to find out more about exactly how Io's volcanoes work. Volcanoes can tell us a great deal about the planets and celestial bodies accompanying Earth in the solar system, while also outlining human events and important areas within our own history. From alien life to the use of explosive weaponry, volcanic discoveries continue to be strange and broad. But what do you make of these volcanic discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.